In the world of wildlife filmmaking, Mike Degree was a renowned explorer and underwater filmmaker dedicated to showcasing the wonders of the natural world. But fate had a different plan. As he embarked on a daring aerial expedition, little did he know that the very skies he relied upon for breathtaking shots would become the backdrop of his final heart-wrenching chapter. Join us as we uncover the details of Mike Degree's last moments. Mike Degree was born on April 29, 1951, in Mobile, Alabama, USA. From his adventures swimming in the swamps of Mobile Bay streams as a little boy, to his time as a skilled springboard diver on his high school swim team, Degree's affinity for water was evident. His passion led him to embrace scuba diving along the mesmerizing Gulf Coast. He graduated from North Carolina State University with a degree in marine zoology, then moved to Hawaii and eventually became a curator at the Waikiki Aquarium. Driven by his insatiable curiosity, Degree later ventured to the enchanting Marshall Islands, where he assumed the role of manager at the Mid-Pacific Marine Laboratory. This opportunity allowed him to immerse himself in the captivating wonders of the Pacific Ocean, expanding his knowledge and nurturing his deep connection with the underwater world. Throughout his career, Degree fearlessly ventured into oceans across the globe, embracing the thrill of swimming and scuba diving in diverse marine environments and shooting films for clients, including the BBC, National Geographic, and Discovery Channel. His passion and dedication were evident as he encountered the wonders of the underwater world firsthand. In more than two dozen documentaries over three decades, he filmed killer whales snatching sea lion pups off the beaches of Patagonia, lobsters migrating in the Bahamas, tiger sharks feeding on albatross in Hawaii, and hydrothermal vents deep in the Atlantic and the Pacific. He turned his lens towards the vulnerable coral reefs, exposed the devastating consequences of El Nino on California's cherished marine mammals, and shed light on the alarming decline of shark populations in the Great Barrier Reef, and he was widely recognized for his contributions to Shark Week, where he became a beloved presence. Driven by a profound fascination for oceanic cephalopods, Degree and his dedicated team even achieved a groundbreaking feat. They became the first to film two rarely seen marine creatures, the enchanting Nautilus and the enigmatic vampire squid, both thriving in their natural habitats deep within the world's oceans. By venturing into unexplored depths, Degree and his team unveiled these rarely seen beings, expanding our understanding of the diverse and captivating life that resides beneath the waves. While much of Degree's filming involved utilizing remote submersibles, he was not one to shy away from personally venturing beneath the ocean's surface, camera in hand. Even despite the fact that on April 2nd, 1978, while diving in a remote area of the Inuitak Atoll in the Marshall Islands, he was attacked by a shark and part of his right arm was torn off. After 11 operations and with only partial use of his right hand, he returned to the sea. In 2002, Degree's exceptional cinematography on the Blue Planet Seas of Life, a sweeping exploration of the world's oceans and their inhabitants, garnered significant recognition. His remarkable talent earned him both an Emmy Award and an accolade from the esteemed British Academy of Film and Television Arts solidifying his status as a visionary in the field. In 2005, Degree collaborated with James Cameron, the Academy Award-winning director of Titanic, to oversee underwater photography for the captivating Discovery Channel documentary series titled Last Mysteries of the Titanic. This groundbreaking project utilized submersible cameras to navigate the intricate passageways of the sunken ship, unveiling unseen rooms and artifacts that lay undisturbed since the fateful sinking in 1912. Degree's role extended beyond being the silent observer behind the camera. In some of these projects, he stepped into the spotlight as a charismatic host, guiding viewers on immersive journeys into the heart of these environmental challenges. With his infectious enthusiasm and deep knowledge, he shared compelling stories, raising awareness and inspiring action to protect our precious marine ecosystems. Unfortunately, on February 4th, 2012, tragedy struck. Mike Degree and Andrew White, also a filmmaker, had just taken off from an airstrip in Jasper's Brush near Nora, 97 miles south of Sydney, in a Robinson R-44 helicopter. They were on their way to film the launch of a deep-sea submarine nearby Jervis Bay when their helicopter nosedived, crashed into the ground, and burst into flames. 
White was piloting the chopper when it crashed. What happened? A report revealed that, soon after the helicopter lifted off, White noticed his side door was open when he was 10 feet off the ground and reached out to close the door. In attempting to shut the door, the pilot probably let go of the cyclic control from the normal right control hand, allowing for an unintended abrupt nose-up pitch and the helicopter tail hitting the ground, the report said. The helicopter then pitched nose down and rolled to the right, resulting in the right landing gear skid and the main rotor blades making contact with the ground. Tragically, a fire erupted from the fuel tanks, ultimately claiming the lives of both men involved, as concluded by the report. This accident highlights the importance of ensuring all doors are secured prior to takeoff, the report said. That said, the opening of a door in flight will not normally affect the operation of an R-44, but the instinctive reaction to immediately deal with such an event can be quite strong. The ATSB advised pilots in a similar situation to leave the door open, or land to close the door. The Robinson R-44 is the world's best-selling civilian helicopter, a top choice among flight schools, sightseeing companies, police departments, and recreational pilots. However, it also is exceptionally deadly. Between 2006 and 2016, Robinson R-44 helicopters were involved in a concerning 42 fatal crashes in the U.S., surpassing all other civilian helicopter models, according to an in-depth Times analysis of the available National Transportation Safety Board accident reports. To put this into perspective, the fatal accident rate for Robinson R-44 SS stands at 1.6 incidents per 100,000 hours flown a rate almost 50% higher than any of the 12 most frequently used civilian models whose flight hours are monitored by the Federal Aviation Administration. These figures underscore the significant safety challenges associated with this particular helicopter model and call for enhanced measures to ensure the well-being of aviation passengers and crews. However, the company president, Kurt Robinson, argued that the vast majority of Robinson accidents are the fault of pilots, not the machine and that many are students or hobbyists with little time at the controls. When people say that ours have more accidents than the others, well, ours are not being flown by professional people, Robinson said. Ours are being flown much, much more at the entry point of the market. At the same time, the R-44 helicopter also faced significant concerns related to post-accident fires, primarily due to damage to the aluminum fuel tanks, which could lead to fuel leakage. In response to these safety issues, the company initiated proactive measures in 2009 by incorporating bladder-type fuel tanks in all newly manufactured R-44 helicopters. Additionally, Service Bulletin SB-78 was released on December 20, 2010, mandating that existing R-44 helicopters equipped with all aluminum fuel tanks be retrofitted with bladder-type tanks. This retrofitting aimed to enhance the fuel system's resilience against post-accident fuel leaks. These initiatives were crucial steps taken by the company to address the fuel-related vulnerabilities in the R-44 model and prioritize the safety of both passengers and crew. Unfortunately for Mike and Andrew, these safety measures came too late. Mike and Andrew were like family to me. Director James Cameron said, They were my deep sea brothers and both were true explorers who did extraordinary things and went places no human being has been. They died doing exactly what they loved most, heading out to sea on a new and personally challenging expedition. Cameron continued, Andrew was kind and loyal, full of life and a sense of fun, and above all, a careful planner who stressed safety to everyone on his team every single day. It is cruelly ironic that he died flying a helicopter, which was second nature to him, like driving a car would be to most people. Andrew White co-wrote and produced the cave diving thriller Sanctum, which took in more than $100 million worldwide in 2011. Cameron had just appointed White to head the Australian office of his 3D company when the crash occurred. On February 12, 2012, Hundreds of people from near and far gathered in the Fess Parker Doubletree Rotunda to pay tribute to Mike Degree for the award-winning filmmaker, globe-trotting adventurer, and beloved community member he was, with the deep blue sea, bobbing boats, and weekend waterfront bustle in the background. All of his family and friends offered the sentiment that Degree's joyous, friendly, and enthusiastic spirit continues to live on and encourage those in attendance to go forth and carry out his mission of teaching the younger generations and protecting the ocean. 
Before his untimely demise, Degree had been working on four projects in production with his wife and production partner, Mimi Armstrong, Degree. When I went through that footage, the stuff where he was so angry, I was heartbroken that he hadn't been able to take that message public, Mimi said. I started the process around nine months after Mike died, working on it very, very slowly for a while because, truthfully, I just couldn't handle seeing him on film. Diving Deep, The Life and Times of Mike DeGruy, directed, produced, written, and narrated by Mimi Armstrong DeGree, offers a profoundly intimate glimpse into the depths of DeGree's remarkable life. This extraordinary documentary, a labor of love that took over six years to create, emerged as a heartfelt tribute to Degree's enduring legacy. Diving Deep is a remarkable piece of filming that paints a vivid portrait of Degree's adventurous spirit and his profound impact on the world of underwater exploration. The documentary showcases captivating footage from his films and underwater work, immersing viewers in the breathtaking beauty of the oceans that he so ardently captured. In-depth interviews with Sir David Attenborough, James Cameron, and many of Degree's collaborators shed light on Degree's immense contributions and the lasting impression he left on those who had the privilege of working alongside him. For Mimi, diving deep became a deeply personal journey of healing and remembrance. The film became a vessel for her to navigate the intricate layers of grief, to honor her late partner's extraordinary career, and to share his profound ecological message with the world. The documentary made its poignant debut on January 30th, 2019, capturing the hearts of audiences and reaffirming Degree's enduring legacy. The film's premiere held a special place at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, a community that Degree deeply cherished. Mimi's hope is that diving deep sparks a flame within each viewer, an awareness of the ocean's significance, a conscious connection to one another, and a renewed commitment to protecting our planet's precious marine ecosystems. Mike lived in the moment more than anyone I know, which might have been because he survived the shark attack, which he called his second birthday. I hope they see his spirit and take every opportunity to relate to each other consciously, and ultimately to jump in and get involved in understanding and protecting the ocean. If you found this video informative or thought-provoking, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on more tragic stories. We love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to leave a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on this story.